Hello all, welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be looking at the Skywatcher Skymax 102AZ Pronto telescope, kindly loaned to me by First Light Optics. I've had this for about six weeks now, so plenty of time to have it out under the stars. Time to formulate my opinions and sort of look at the pros and the cons of the telescope and sort of Hopefully it will help someone decide whether this is the right first telescope for them or even a second telescope. So the first thing I'd like to discuss is the tripod. If we look down here we can see these are the twist locks that help extend the tripod legs. One thing I did notice with this particular model, or this particular example at least, is they are quite gritty. So when you undo them and do them back up, you can feel a bit of grit in there, probably from rough edges on the on the threads which is fine I mean they will free up but the only downside to that is that this is um, powder coated in black and any any sort of swarf or bits of gritty metal that comes off the threads inside there ends up as you can see hopefully I can show that on the, the camera ends up scratching the legs maybe it would have been better if this was kind of silver just metal plain metal rather than as nice as it looks in black it does get scratched rather easily if someone's coming from a photographic background or got photographic equipment then it's good news with this mount because it has a create Whitworth bolt which you can attach the tripod to all kinds of photographic heads you don't have to have this head as you can see that's quite wobbly these are made to a budget and there's a, only a certain amount of uh, um, quality assurance that happens on budget equipment. So the, on the onus is on the, the purchaser of this just to nip these up and tighten these up. And this will, this will become a lot more sturdy and make using it with the supplied peer extension that does come with this a bit more viable as well. Just a few turns of the Allen key and the mount becomes very stable, not like it was initially as I showed you, that was perhaps a tiny bit of an exaggeration. I think it would become a little bit more loose than typical, but just to show that don't panic if it arrives and it's that wobbly, is just a few quick turns of an Allen key and it becomes very rigid indeed. And I'll move on to a quick test now where I'll attach my Canon 77D at prime focus and point it at an object in the daytime and just tap the tripod to show how quickly the vibrations die down with the legs fully extended. Here we have the mount on concrete and with the tripod done up with the Allen key and I'm now pointed at some trees about 50 meters away, 40 meters away and I'm now going to tap the tripod to show you how the vibrations dampen down on concrete. The excellent thing about this tripod is its weight, I feel. The thing is, I can pick this whole telescope with the optical tube, all accessories, mount head and tripod, with one arm, and I weigh about 62 kilograms. So, if I can do it, most other people should be able to pick that up. Onto the mount head. This is um, a solid bit of machined aluminium, so it's Nice and sturdy considering how lightweight it is. It's nicely done. We've got these two clutches here that if we do undo, we can make course adjustments to the telescope. We can move that up and down coarsely. And then if we do these up, we can do slow motion controls and the slow motion controls are very nice. And you can either fit that that side or that side and the same goes so that's the, the altitude axis. So the azimuth axis is here and we can do the same. We can undo that. And then we can twist the whole telescope round on azimuth course to make big course adjustments or we can tighten that up and we can make slow motion adjustments. I'm more impressed with the mount head than I am the tripod. So my recommendation would be possibly if you've got a better photographic tripod like a heavy duty photographic tripod and because this is a 3.8 width of fitting you could just simply take this lovely mount head off and put it on a on a better tripod. Onto the optical tube now which is the uh, the business end of the telescope. 
One thing that these don't come with, which you definitely need, is a dew shield. As you can see, there's a correct plate at the front of the optics, and that's right at the front, so any damp air is going to stick to that, and it's going to fog up that glass, and that's the, unless you've got a hairdryer handy, that's the, the end of the evening or night of observing or imaging. So I don't understand why Skywatcher and Celestron and the like don't incorporate or, or include a basically all it is is a plastic tube that you extend onto the end of that. Um, it, it wouldn't cost much I'm sure um, but as they don't if you're thinking about buying one of these telescopes which I do recommend it it is a good telescope but you would need if you are thinking about buying one then you do need a dew shield and I'll link up above to um, a tutorial I did on how to make a dew shield for less than £10 but otherwise um, you can buy AstroZap dew shields from from your local astronomy outlet and I as I've been loaned this by First Light Optics I, I'll point out they do stock AstroZap dew shields and I'll put them in the links below. The optical tube actually disguises the true focal length of this telescope. It looks small but if you if you look down the optical tube you can see going past the corrector plate you've got a mirror at the back that bounces the light back which hits this secondary mirror there and then comes all the way down the tube out the back through the diagonal to the eyepiece. So if you unfold all that the telescope is actually very long. It's like a long it's basically like a long refractor but with a very small central obstruction. So it's not going to give you quite as nice looking stars as the refractor, but then again, the portability of the system is a thing that a long refractor doesn't have. So it does have a lot going for it, this. The supplied diagonal is a prism diagonal. So what that does is it gives you a correct orientation image which allows you to use this telescope during the daytime so if you're looking for a telescope you can also use during the daytime this might be a very good option for you because it will give you a correctly orientated image it won't be upside down like a number of other types of telescope i think the only downside is that cheap prism diagonals like this one do give a a few what we call aberrations on astronomical images so if you look at a bright star with this uh, cheap prism diagonal you'll see a couple of lines coming across out from that star like diffraction spikes and that's down to the fact of that these are mainly designed to be used in the daytime so if you're looking to buy this package but you mainly want to do um, astronomy rather than daytime observing then you, a, a good upgrade, as well as a dew shield, making or buying a dew shield, would be to upgrade the prism diagonal to a 90 degree mirror diagonal. Now the supplied eyepieces are very basic modified Acromat eyepieces. So you get a, get a 10mm and a 25mm. And these are just to get you going but to be honest, I've tested this 25mm um, modified Acromat eyepiece against my 25mm um, plus eyepiece, which is a common upgrade path to go to, and I can barely tell the difference. And I think that's down to the fact that this type of telescope is very kind on optics. It's a very, what we call a very slow optical telescope, so the F-ratio is around 13 so even a very cheap eyepiece can, can actually cope with the optics at F13 and does a very good job. I'd almost say that if money's tight, I wouldn't even bother upgrading the Super 25 with this particular telescope. But if you bought a F5 refra uh, reflector, for example, where the, the light coming in um, hits a, a very more, much more steeply curved mirror at the back, um, and the eyepiece has got to sort of try and correct more steeply curved light than the Super 25 that would come with the reflector version of this wouldn't cope so well from my experience and therefore an upgrade to the eyepiece would be a good idea. Um, the 10mm that comes with this 
isn't as good as the 25 but again with the optics of this being nice and slow it's kind for eyepieces so I wouldn't actually say with this particular telescope that um, an eyepiece upgrade is one of the first things you should do it would be the, the Dew Shield and then I'd put the the diagonal next on the list if it was me but having said that you don't have to do any of those upgrades the prism diagonal is fine you do get a couple of lines coming off bright stars and bright objects like planets but as long as that doesn't bother you which you probably wouldn't as a beginner you only get a bit more discerning as you get more experience with observing and then little things do start to bother you and that's when the cost goes up because you buy more expensive equipment anyway so moving on to the finder scope so what this telescope has it's got the main telescope which is very powerful but it's also got a what we call a finder scope attached and the idea is that you line this low powered te little finder scope up um, pointing at the same thing the main telescope is and this one's got a much wider field of view and it allows you to find things a lot more easily than if you didn't have it because this has got a very narrow field of view because it's got a very long focal length this has got only it's got a very short focal length so it's got a very wide field of view so the idea is that when you're setting this telescope up you point the main telescope at like a TV aerial making sure that it's not pointing anywhere near the Sun you line it up in the center and then you make adjustments to these screws on the top to line the finder scope up with the same TV aerial and then you're all set so then you can use the finder scope initially to find the object you're looking you're trying to find and then you can view it through the main telescope so how this telescope focuses is a little bit different to other types of telescopes so what it has it has a focus knob here and what that does it moves the primary mirror up and down the optical tube and what that does allow, it allows for a lot of focus travel. Some telescopes you struggle to reach focus with eyepieces, certain eyepieces and certain cameras, and you have to put smaller adapters on the back or longer adapters on the back so you can reach focus. But with this design, with the mirror going, you can push the mirror up and down the tube, it's got a lot of focus travel, so you shouldn't have any problems reaching focus. And as you can see here, I've pinched one of my boys uh, Lego tires he hasn't noticed and I've just put that on there to make that wider so I've got a bit more delicate control this telescope is very quick to set up out of the box so I'll link to my uh, unboxing video and you can see how you'd set one of these up and and it is relatively easy to do the main reason I feel this is good for anyone starting out in astronomy is because the mount is a very basic up and down left and right mount with slow motion controls it's not as complicated as second setting up an equatorial mount which does have its advantages because it means you can point it at the pole star and it will track with the rotation of the earth either with a motor or with a slow motion control this you do have to to follow the object you do have to make adjustments to both of these slow motion controls as you're observing or or doing some very very basic imaging of say the moon or the planets Oh, I think it's okay for videoing. I've done a bit of videoing with this of the moon. I'll link to a bit of that footage just to show you what to expect when you're um, imaging with it or looking through the telescope. It would be quite a similar experience with uh, the camera I used. Final thoughts on this telescope and its suitability for the beginner. I think it scores pretty highly with its price, uh, portability, the things it comes with, the quality of the optics, I didn't actually mention it but there's no, what, there's very low aberrations on this telescope because of its very slow focal length so it will perform very nicely with cheap eyepieces that come with it and um, it will have no uh, blue fringing chromatic aberration like some other types of telescope have so it will give you a nice crisp views of objects it's ideally suited to which are like the moon planets and double stars and bright clusters like M13, Messier 13. The downside to the optics are that it's a very narrow field of view so you don't really get much context it's not at all suitable for deep sky imaging 
optically or mount wise so if you're looking at getting into that this isn't the system for you but if you're looking at doing a bit of webcam imaging of the moon as it drifts by just to video it or, or to observe the the moon or the planets which are the easiest objects to find and probably amongst the most rewarding in terms of the detail you can see then this is a good telescope to go for especially for the price so that's my final thoughts on it. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you'd like more from me reviewing telescopes and anything space related, please hit that subscribe button below and that notification bell. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.